perspective of purposeful and powerful living strategies. I'm your host, Karen Jackson. Success comes in many different ways, and oftentimes we can lose ourselves and our true purpose on this journey if we're not careful. On this journey, we have to ask ourselves, am I having an impact or just expending energy? During this 15-minute podcast, my goal is to share the journeys and stories of some very powerful men and women who have not let challenges, setbacks, and circumstances define who they are and what they can accomplish. My hope is that we can learn from their successes and setbacks and walk away with some tools, strategies, and techniques that can help us achieve success and accomplish the goals we have always dreamed about. Remember, we have purpose, live it. We have promise, develop it. We have the power, embrace it. So let's get started. Today, our special guest is Valerie J. Lewis Coleman, who serves experts and professional speakers to magnify and monetize their message by publishing quality books. She co-founded the region's premier book event, the Dayton Book Expo. And since its inception, the Expo has hosted over 500 authors and thousands of book lovers. As a best-selling author and award-winning publisher, she has over 15 years of experience in the book business. Valerie has guided aspiring authors through the writing process and turning their ideas from pen to paper to published as they master self-publishing to make money. So thank you so much, Valerie, for being our special guest today. Karen, thank you so much for having me. And so what I want them to do is dream big, but dream beyond your local fan base and your friends and family. But how can you expand your brand, increase your territory, and position yourself to succeed internationally, not just Dayton, Ohio? Nothing wrong with Dayton, but I'm saying, you know, <laughs> if you're only writing a book for the city of Dayton, and that's cool too, there's still a wide audience there. But if you want to cast a broader net, so Dr. Towns is like, quit chasing people. I, we see all kind of, see all kind of junk, and it just kills me to not say something. Well, you know, you need to do this on your book, or that really is not going to serve you well. Or if you do this, you're going to find you're not going to be able to sell too many copies after your family and friends buy them because, and I was so passionate about that. I was running and telling people stuff, and Dr. Townsend so eloquently said, stop doing that. Because what you are doing is you're you're giving them your information, which is okay to give information, but they, they didn't hire you. They hired somebody else who didn't know what they were doing. They're putting out this junk, and because you can't, you know, I, I want to see them succeed, you're giving away your information and they're all they're going to do is take it to this other party who's going to do better with their business and make more money back to that win lose so now they're winning with my information and i and you know what it, for me it's not just about the money but i can't eat off of oxygen only mm-hmm. i've tried for many years it doesn't work and when we talk about success you have to learn you know how to be that best business person and and what strategies and things you need to mm-hmm. incorporate in your not just your personal life but like you said your your mentors your support mm-hmm. group so that you can continue to grow and prosper absolutely i made a lot of mistakes and I, because i didn't i didn't hire a darnielle until last year or was it 2016 is when i first hired her so i didn't have a mentor to lead me and guide me and tell me what to do. So I made a bunch of mistakes in the process. The good thing about it is my clients don't have to make the mistakes I make because I already made it for them, okay? So so that that's one thing that benefits them. But the other part of making a bunch of mistakes is if you fall forward. I was watching a video with um, Will Smith on Facebook and he said, fail, fail early, fail frequently and fail forward. Because if you are wise enough to learn from your mistakes, it will propel you to do better. I won't make that mistake again. Some of the mistakes I made in the past, I won't make them again. When I work with my clients, I won't let them make the mistakes that I made or that I've seen other clients make or other people make. So it's an opportunity to learn and grow and develop. And so yeah, failure, even though a lot of people shun the word and oh my God, but if, if you're not trying, then, you, then you're not doing anything. Failure is just practicing, but you're getting better at it. That's a good way to put that. Now let's talk, talk about some successes. Uh-huh. Um, I saw recently that your... Um, Book Expo was featured and uh, tell us a little bit about that. Tell us a little bit. I know there's a lot of good things happening this year at the Expo. Tell us Mm -hmm. a little bit about that. Well, the Dayton Book Expo has been around since 2010. That was our first year of launching the Expo. Since that time, we've served over 500 authors and thousands of book lovers. And back in December, we won a Trailblazer Award for our 
advocacy uh, and literary experiences. So we were recognized in Indianapolis for the work that we're doing in Dayton and uh, got these beautiful crystal plaques and a lot of you know media coverage. But and the award is great. But what followed from that was then I wrote a press release and in the press release landed us an article in the Dayton Daily News that ran, I think, January 11th. And we've gotten all kind of feedback and, you know, I've had people emailing me and calling me and Facebook and, and I want to be part of the expo or how can I come to this and I want to advertise because we're doing advertising this year, which is something new. We've added sponsors, which is something new because we have a lot of people who can't come to Dayton, conflicting dates or too far to travel, but this way they can still participate. So they have advertising opportunities where they can be on our web page. Our website gets like 12,000 unique visits a month. That's, you know, that's not a million, but that's a lot. It is. And for someone who's just getting started in the book business, 12,000 impressions is a lot of impressions. It sure is. So, so those are the things that we are doing this year. And right now, I think we have almost 40 authors already registered, which is probably the most we've had at this time. Oh, um, wonderful. Yeah, we're shooting for probably 70, 75, which is, you know, that's a great audience. But what's important for me, just like with everything else, it's more than just having the authors there and selling their books. It's important for me. So I do a boot camp um, about March. I think it's the third Friday of March. We do a boot camp. And in that boot camp, we give them strategies and marketing tips and tools on how to leverage their books at the expo and beyond. That's complementary to the um, Dayton Book Expo authors. We're considering opening, opening that up to other people who aren't necessarily registered for the expo, but want to attend to get that experience and that exposure. Um, we also, I do a press release. Four or five press releases go out. And as a result of the press releases, authors have landed newspaper articles, radio interviews, TV interviews, you know, all kind of other um, opportunities, speaking engagements come out of the press releases. So it's really about helping them better understand the business, but also exposing their brand. I want to help them to magnify their message. That's what I do. Monetize and magnify their message. And so that's what happens with the Dayton Book Expo. That website is DaytonBookExpo.com. And the official date is April the 28th. It's myself, LaTanya Branham, and Charlotte Jenkins. And so how did you ladies form that expo? Well, in 2000, it goes all the way back for me to 2007. Okay. Again, helping. I had a young lady, Jessica Allen. Yeah, Jessica, I said your name. <laughs> Jessica Allen, who was in high school. I was coaching, mentoring, teaching, instructing three high school students on the book business, writing, publishing, and marketing. And so I ended up publishing them in the book in 2007, Tainted Mirror. It has stories from inmates and the high school students and then just general people who wanted to talk about being held hostage, whether virtually by the self-imposed limitations or literally in jail. And so uh, because of Jessica's short story, um, she wanted to, false identity, she wanted to then write it into a full novel. So the intent was for her to be a high school student, come out with a published novel, and then have this, I wanted to have a citywide book party for her. So I started putting the plans together to have a party for her at the Sinclair Community College, which is our annual sponsor for the expo, as well as My Mobile Mommies. They do the kids zone. And so I wanted to have a, a big book party for her. And I started putting all the pieces together and thinking about all the details and all the logistics. And I said, whew, that's a lot of work. Well, just so happened, Jessica didn't finish the book, so I didn't have that event, but it was still kind of kind of started a fire, kindled something in me. So in 2009, I mentioned it to LaTanya Branham and Charlotte Jenkins and told them what I wanted to do. And they were like, you know, you know what? We liked it. That's a good idea. So we came together and discussed the pros and cons of other book events we had attended throughout our years as authors. We took the good and put it into the expo, took out the bad, you know, and worked it. And we're constantly growing it and, and maturing it every year. But then we used that resource to launch the Dayton Book Expo in 2010. That was our first expo and we had about 50 or so authors um last year we had 97 authors Wow. Yeah. And attendance grows every year. So again, we're looking for advertising and sponsors and then more authors. We're inviting book clubs this year. We're actually going to do a writing contest, which is something new for uh, um, elementary, junior high and high school students. So there'll be a monetary award and then there'll be the opportunity to be presented with a gifts at the Dayton Book Expo. So that's something we're going to be launching probably sometime in February. That sounds great. So it sounds like you're doing a whole. When do you sleep? Let me tell you something. That's funny. I said that to uh, an author today. He reached out to me, haven't heard from you in a while. How you doing? So I told all the stuff I'm doing. I said, Phew. He's like, well, When do you sleep? I said, Sleep. What is that? <laughs> actually, I do sleep. I actually, I feel I'm not as productive as I could be. I told you my primary hours are about 10 to 7. Mm -hmm. After 7, I shut it down. I'm in front of the TV when I could probably be doing much more work, but I'm just not as productive at those hours. When I need to go to sleep, I'm going to go to sleep. But I know that this is my calling. I honestly know that this is what the Lord called me to do. He, he, he spoke very audibly to me. I want you to help my people get their books published. And so I am positioned myself to do that on a broader scale. So I'm working on an online virtual mentoring program so that people can do it themselves and go in, uh, get into the membership site, and then do what they need to do to publish their own books. There'll be occasional
you know, group coaching calls with that and some other insight, you know, some other hands on with me. But that's more of a do it yourself approach. So I'm doing what he told me to do. And I see him opening doors for me. And I am like amazed at, how, at the things he's doing now. When you put your mind to it, when you position yourself with people who have done what you've already done and can give you good, sound, provable, repeatable advice, it makes a difference in the direction that you go. I have a plan. I have a mentor. I'm dreaming big. I'm staying consistent. And, and I'm going to do the work. And so all of those things are coming together and I see them, you know, manifesting it for me and my clients. So I'm excited about it. That's wonderful. And I'm, I'm so excited to see all the successes and all the wonderful recognitions that uh, you've received. You definitely you. deserve it. You and your team. Absolutely. I think you guys are great. So as we wrap up, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you, this is something I always ask um, our guests because um, I think it's important for us to not only pour into our young people, but also have some reflection time mm -hmm. of looking back over our lives and our challenges. Um, so what advice would you give that nine-year-old girl? That nine-year-old girl, who was me? That was you. Okay, so. And it could be about life, business. Right, just anything, anything in general. Correct. But what I remember most, is, it's, it's funny that you should say nine years old, because at about nine years old, my father had said something to me that I internalized quite differently than how he meant it. So he told me, if you can't be beautiful, be smart. So what that, I see your eyes, but like most women are like, what? So what that said to me, although that wasn't his words, it said to me that I wasn't pretty. And I internalized that. And so my biggest thing was confidence for a long time. It was confidence. Okay, so that, but the flip side of it is it stemmed my academic fervor because I have an undergraduate degree in one of the elitist engineering schools, Kettering University now, used to be General Motors Institute, MBA from the University of Dayton, working towards a master's and then a, eventually a doctorate in divinity from an online school. So it forged my academia, which then, of course, positioned me to be able to do the things that I've done in my life. But the downside was it stifled my confidence. So I would say to that nine-year-old, that nine-year-old little girl, is that's not what your daddy meant. He wasn't saying you weren't beautiful. He was saying, baby, I want you to be all that you can be. Be beautiful, be smart, be kind, be loving. You know, you is important, you know, all of that. <laughs> that's, that's what I believe what he was saying, but he didn't, he didn't articulate it that way. And so I took him literally at his words, and I think I misrepresented that. So I would tell that nine-year-old Valerie, baby, you are beautiful. You are worthy. You are deserving. God loves you. I love you. You have everything you need inside of you. It's already inside of you. Just tap into your grace. That's what I would say. Then I wouldn't have spent the last 45, oh, I'm not telling my age, last <laughs> few years trying to figure it out. Well, you have been a delight to uh, talk to, to get some inspiration from, and we really wish you all the best. And you're going to have to come back because we want to talk more about the goodie box oh, girl, and, yeah. and about love and relationships mm -hmm. and all that. Because you you've know. been to those events. Yes, I know absolutely. you have. Absolutely. I'm still working on some things. But, <laughs> uh, but we definitely have to have you back. Val, and we really appreciate you coming and wishing you much success. And tell everyone again, how should they make contact with you if they want to come to any of your events mm -hmm. or if they want to participate in the uh, Dayton Book Expo? So the Dayton Book Expo website is DaytonBookExpo.com. My website is actually under construction, um, the one for writers. So I'm going to give you another way to reach me, which is um, Queen V as in Valerie Publishing dot com. They can reach me through that website or my direct number, which is 888-802-1802. And the website that's under construction is Pen of the Writer dot com. P E N as an in ink pen. Pen of the Writer dot com. And that one should be live in a couple of weeks. So they can reach me all of those. QueenVPublishing.com, DatingBookExpo.com, PenOfTheWriter.com. I got a couple more dot coms. You'll need no more. And then 888-802-1802. Well, we thank you so much, uh, Val. I said, you know, I always, one of the quotes I keep reminding myself is growth and comfort cannot exist in mm. the same place. Okay. And so it's funny when you mentioned about the uh, Facebook Live, I was, you know, I was like, oh, I don't know about that. But then it, I reminded myself again that growth and comfort can exist in That's the right. same place. So, and look at you doing the dang thing. So I'm just trying, but uh, we thank you so much and we'll definitely have you on again. Sounds like a plan. I appreciate you having me. Okay. So stay tuned for purposeful and powerful living strategies. We'll talk to you soon.